Hey, what's up guys? This is the Ridge Gearhead coming to you with everything Lego on Brick Films University and with this video I'm going to be teaching you guys the main three points about DSLR shooting. Um, before I really get started, I want to dedicate this video to um, a longtime viewer and good friend of mine, Pace Studios. Him and I were talking in a comment section of uh, Zombie Car and he was asking me some questions about aperture and exposure and all that kind of thing. And I could have explained it to him, but I just thought I would make a video instead. So that is what this is. If you um, are using a DSLR to film your animations and you don't quite know what you're doing yet or you're brand new to it or whatever, then this is a great place to start. So to Pace Studios, thank you man so much for your interest and thank you for being such a uh, long time viewer. So shooting and taking pictures can be um, very in-depth and nitpicky after a while once you get a little more into it, but for right now, I want to focus on the three main building blocks, if you will, of um, taking pictures and video. And that is uh, aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. So let's start with aperture. So every camera and every camera lens has this thing called an iris on the inside. And basically what it does is it, it gets bigger and smaller depending on what you set it to. And um, it dictates how much light goes into the camera and reaches the sensor. So aperture is measured in um, f-stops. And in this image right here, the, the aperture is at f8. And this combined with the shutter speed and ISO, we have a nicely exposed image. So in this image, I've cranked up the aperture to as high as it'll go, to f2.5. And so the smaller the number, the bigger the uh, iris gets. So this is as wide open as the lens will go. f2.5, you can tell it's totally blown out, way too bright. If I wanted to rock a 2.5 aperture, I would have to turn, um, turn up the shutter speed and turn down the ISO, but I'll get more to that in a minute. Uh, right now, take a look at this image. This aperture is at f18. The iris is uh, considerably smaller than the f2.5. And not only is there a big difference in exposure and how bright the image is, but I also want you guys to look at the background. So here we have two images. Um, on the left side we have f8. On the other side we have uh, the aperture set to f18. Um, now you'll notice that there's not just a difference in exposure. The, the left side is clearly brighter than the right side, but look at the background where I drew the line there. You'll notice um, on the F18 side, the background is a little bit more in focus than the left side. They're both pretty out of focus, but this is because the smaller the aperture is, the deeper the focus you have. So in this example, the left side, F32, is the, the focus goes much deeper because the aperture is so small, but on the right side, it's not as small, so the depth of field is a little bit shallower. So, th so basically, the background is more blurred out when you have... Um, a larger aperture than a smaller aperture. But this has to be balanced out with ISO and shutter speed because it does more than just um, than depth of field, you know, it, it plays around with how much light gets let into the camera as mentioned previously. So um, it's important to balance um, how much you want in focus with light, with the ISO, and the shutter speed. It gets, it, it's confusing at first, but it's, once you start using it more, it, it becomes much more easier to uh, balance the three out. Okay, so now we got aperture out of the way, let's move on to shutter speed. So if aperture is how big the iris opens up, shutter speed is how long the iris stays open for during the picture. And you can change this to anywhere from like 1 1,000th one of a second to like 10 seconds. So this is much easier to understand than aperture because all it does is determines how much light is let into the camera. So in this image I have it set to 150, that's a 50th of a second, and you can tell that it's it's really not enough, there's not enough light, it's too underexposed. So the way we can change this and make it a little bit brighter is to decrease the shutter speed. So make it a little bit slower, make it uh, exposed to the light a little bit longer, and that will brighten up the image. And luckily, unlike Aperture, this doesn't mess with the focus or anything like that. It only dictates how much light gets let into the camera. The only real restriction with this is that um, when you're, if you have like a uh, a long exposure picture being taken, like let's just say like a, like a second long, during that second you cannot move the camera at all, otherwise it'll be blurry and light streaky, and you don't want that. But that's that's really not that big of an issue because your camera should be completely still when you're doing stop motion anyway. So just keep in mind, um, don't touch your camera at all when it's taking a picture because then you'll get light streaks. But that's not even that big of an issue, which makes shutter speed a very useful way to um, dictate how much light gets into your camera when doing stop motion. Now like shutter speed, the ISO of your camera is pretty easy to understand. So let's just say for a second that you're working with this image. Um, you have the aperture set to f32, so you have nice deep focus. 
and the shutter speed is at a measly half a second. And there's one other way to brighten up the image, and that is to mess with the ISO. So, um, this whole video I've been I've said a few times about how light goes into the camera and uh, this dictates how much light goes in, whatever. Um, now, when the light actually goes through the lens, it hits the sensor in the camera. And the ISO is um, how sensitive that sensor is. So the lower it is, the um, the less sensitive to light it is, the higher it is, the higher sensitive it is to light. So basically, the lower it is, the darker the picture, the higher it is, the lighter the picture. Now, the ISO range depends on the camera. I'm using the Canon T3i, and that uh, ISO range is from 100 to 6400. However, as a general rule of thumb, you want your ISO to be as low as possible. Now, I usually have mine set to 200, sometimes 400, but I, n I very rarely go above 400. And this is because the more sensitive your sensor is, the, the worse the image gets. So right here with this image, I turned off both of my main lights, and this is just from the, um, the overhead light in the room that I was shooting in. And um, I cranked up the ISO to compensate for, for light loss. But it doesn't look good. You can see that it's grainy and just muddy, and you should never turn up your ISO to compensate for um, for light loss. Just get as many lights as you can and turn down the shutter speed as low as it'll go. Make adjusting the uh, the ISO higher to be your absolute last resort. So to wrap this up, here is what I would think to be a uh, very well exposed shot with my focus in order the way I want it to. F25 for the aperture, so um, it's. It's very small, the iris is very small, but I also have that deep focus, and to compensate for that, I only have um, half a second of uh, shutter speed, and the ISO is a very low 200. Now, um, another thing that I should mention is that it's important to have lots of light, so you don't have to have the shutter speed to be very low, and you can keep the ISO low as well, and you can still have lots of um, flexibility with the aperture. So guys, I hope this video helped out a lot. Um, thank Pace Studios for the suggestion, if this helped you at all. Pace Studios, hope you got some, um, some good info out of this. And uh, yeah, keep on making your brick films, people. This is the Ridge Gearhead, signing off. Thanks for watching, guys. Rate, comment, and subscribe. A class is dismissed.